Today's lesson is on CSEC Theatre Arts, where we will be focusing on elements of theatre. I am Ricardo McFarlane, and I'll be your tutor for today. All right, so it's CSEC time, and unfortunately, we can't get to engage the classroom as all we are supposed to, because of course, theatre arts is a hands-on subject. All right, so we are going to go through some pointers that I know definitely that the theatre art students will need to know, and these lessons are actually revisions, all right? So first, we are going to look at uh, the elements of theatre, but we're going to continue because, of course, I know that you guys would have gone through a lesson of theatre art already. So today's presentation is prepared by Shelley and Siblis, and of course, I'm the presenter. All right, so here we have elements of theatre continued, and I am going to share with you our specific objectives so that you can hold me accountable on the lesson for today. All right, so let us look at the elements of theatre and the capacity of directing textual analysis and design. So our objective for today, we have students should be able to develop an understanding of the roles and responsibility of the director. Um, formulate an approach or a concept for the play and that is very important because in order for you to move on to anything at all you definitely have to get that out of the way um, design a four plan for a scene or number of scenes now to create blockings an appropriate use of the performance space and i know this is one of the things that students often time have a challenge with in terms of turning their back to the audience and etc but we are going to briefly touch on all of that because i know that by now all of you would have gone through it already all right, so in looking at the director's role and responsibility, right, there are something that we have to look at first. Production team, all right? So on the production team, and these are the people who are responsible for executing an effective production, all right? So first we have the producer, and of course this is the man or the one with the money who is you know, ensuring that everybody gets what they're supposed to have in order to get the job done. Then we have the director, and if you notice, I have that in bold because that is going to be one of the focus of our lesson. You have the designer, stage manager, and front of house manager. Now, each of these links are very important to an, an effective production. So it's very important that you know all of them so you can always cross them over. All right. So, director. All right. So since we're going to develop a, uh, an understanding of the, re the responsibility of the director, we're going to look at some things of the director right now. So the director now, the first thing the director has to do is to read the script. Have to read the script first, and the director has to now do what we call a creative interpretation. Having read the script, understanding the script, you have to now have a creative interpretation how you're going to go about executing this thing. Then now we have the casting, because of course you have the script, you have characters, you need people to play the characters. So we go to casting. And this is where now the director and the stage manager will host a thing we call audition. People come in play and they try out and they read for the roles and the director now with his or her vision will definitely choose the people who are best suitable for each characters. And then now we have the rehearsal process. Now this is the part now where we see where the production is, the engine is now working because we get into where we now know the final product, rehearsal process. Everybody's on board. The tech crew, the cast, stage manager, director, etc. And then now the director works very closely with the stage manager. So the stage manager has to ensure that he or she execute everything that the director wants to get done. It has to get done. And this is very tricky, you know, because I know for theatre art students, you guys are doing playing all of these roles. So it is very hard. It's not like in a professional theatre where you have the director playing a specific role, the stage manager playing a specific role. But in this case, you now since it is group work, the playmaking and the production exam, you guys have to be working across the board. Alrighty, so let's move on to the concept or approach. Now, this one is where the director gives you his or her overall vision of the play, what he or she intends to execute throughout the process and what the final product would look like. So we're talking about the director have to come up with the theme, you know, meet with the designer, to give an overview of what he or she expects and then the designer now with his or her creative mind will also assist the director with creating how the play looks all right so we have here 
See, I have it right here. The overall vision and artistic interpretation. Right? So you know that the director is the captain of the production team. So he or she is responsible for the entire play. So long and short of the story, the director has to know how the show looks before it ends. At the beginning, middle and the end, before the audience sees it, it the director has to determine whether this is a good product or not. All right? And then now we have uh, the setting, time, and place. So the director has to ensure that in, even in the textual analysis, he or she has to know the time that the play is being set, where it's going to be set, what are the things that are going to be there, what it looks like. All of these things are very important. Okay. Bam, bam, bam. So with artistic interpretation now this includes a number of things and of course what we have here is basically uh it's because it's revision we are just briefly touching on these things because you know that this is a very wide topic which means that you'd have to do your additional reading all right so artistic interpretation we have the script here so the first thing the director has to do read the script get an understanding make a determination how he or she is going to execute it and then now with that said we have the characters director have to get the best suited actors to play the characters and just as i go to the characters let me show you something over here we're looking at characters in the textual analysis the director have to also do this as well as the actors look at the acronym we call pimps can anybody tell me what the pimps represents all right the pimps now the first p represents the physical state of the character now the director have to have an idea what this is like what he or she looks like in each role and then know the intellectual state of the character how smart the character be we school him go him go school or not him street smart what is it character have to have some level of intelligence and that speaks to that and then now we have the moral state of the character and this speaks to the character's belief system Right, what the character believe in God, the devil, good, evil, you name it. And then we have the psycho. Like, what am I doing? Psycho, right, logical state of the character. And this speaks whether the character is sane or insane. Um, uh, the, the character emotional state as well. And last but not least, we have the social state of the character. How the character interact with his or her environment. All right, so this is very important that you understand the pimps, the director have to know this, the actors have to know this because this is a relationship, it's a, it's a teamwork when you're creating the production. So everybody has to be on the same page in order to get this done. All right, awesome. So now we have the light and sound. So the artistic interpretation, the, the director have to know how the lighting and sound going to come in play now, right? The props that are going to be used in the production by the actors and also the set and costumes right so it's very crucial because when you go to the play as a member of the audience you want to see something that looks really good and guess what the team have to ensure that it looks really good before you get there and all of this is a part of the process you are seeing what is going on in the playwright's mind and in the director's mind and all the other members who are actively participating in the production all righty so so one we have we, one we have covered um the first objective which is developing an understanding of the role and responsibility of the director you know that the director is responsible for assisting the actors to interpret and to play very well the roles right or characters um the director is also responsible for creating a rehearsal schedule along with the stage manager um hosting the auditions right and many other things that you definitely have to do your additional reading on all right so now we have the floor plan we're moving on to the next objective now we're looking at the design right now in order for the director are the actors to be working in the space during rehearsal when the actual set is not ready then he or she needs what do you call it now a guide and this is where the floor plan comes in now right and this is where the floor plan comes in where the designer and the director now have a basic understanding of what the floor in the placement of fixtures would be so that they can run the play work with the play while the set is being made all right so you have the floor plan which leads me to the set slash setting okay 
Now, can anybody tell me what a floor plan is? I mean, if you do technical drawing, you should have an idea. And of course, you are a theatre art student, so you must know what a floor plan is. I'm going to get miserable, and you don't want that. All right. Bam, bam, bam. So, the basic definition for the floor plan right here. We have floor plan, the, um, the design or layout of the stage that indicates the placement of fixtures, scenery, and levels. All right, this is very basic, which is pretty much good enough for you. Right, so when you, when you go to a play and you look on the stage, everything that you see on the stage is a part of the set. And all of that idea with the fixtures came from what we call the floor plan. I'm going to give you an idea of what a floor plan looks like. Okay, so right here now, what we see in here is an example of a floor plan. So let's say, for example, um, we have a play you know, with, that is set in a living room um a household we have the living room right here we have maybe this could this is this look like the kitchen here right here so and then now uh, this is where we eat some food and stuff dining here and then this is the living room where we have the sofa the center table etc now what is important you know this what you're seeing here is what we call a bird eye view um so you're looking an aerial view you're looking from in the sky on the floor so these lines right here represents the wall of the floor plan that is going to be elevated right and what is very crucial also is the angle that the audience is seeing the show from if you notice this is the proscenium stage right here this represents the proscenium stage this is the arch right here so we see here are the angles the audience is able to see the show all right so this is a basic example of a floor plan and we've seen everything from in the roof right here okay bam 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 okay so question why this question mark right here hmm now, in identifying the locations of the stage and you're putting in your set design now, we have to understand that the area here that we cannot see is considered to be backstage. So from where these lines are, that runs all the way here, anything that is behind here that the audience cannot see is considered to be backstage. Okay. Now, so this right here is what we call a pictorial view or a normal eye view of what a set would look like. I mean, many of you, if you go to the center stage or if you go to the Phoenix Theater to watch a play, you'll see some really awesome set. And those are perfect examples for those of you who have experienced that before. So when you look at this now, you're seeing a basic idea of what a set would look like when you're looking at the proscenium stage. All right, you see right here we have the center table. It's not exactly a replication of... Um, the floor plan that you saw earlier but is you know it's the best i could you know get to show you and this look pretty much look like what you call it in um, one of those uh, medieval settings you know old 90s 80s century kind of thing so this here basic idea of a pictorial view of the set now the designer have to be very creative when he or she creating the set very creative very resourceful have to know how to put things together to capture the idea of the director and also share ideas and then no this can be very tricky with the preparation because since you are students and you are the ones that are doing everything you know ideas going clash because people have magnificent ideas and you think that i should do my idea or you know we can't go do anything so negotiating is very important that's why it's called teamwork all right so when you look at a set and when considering how you're going to create a set, there are things that you have to bear in mind. The era. Era is very important. The, the, now, the era represents a historical period, right? When I look at the set, I should be able to tell which age. This looks like a very old setting. I, I mean, I can't imagine any modern house looking like this in today's, any new house being built like this today. Um, so when you look at it, you should be able to tell something about the set. It should, it's supposed to be informing you. All right. Um, moving on to the time. You should, when the play starts, you should be able to tell what time of day it is, what time of the week, the month, the year. You should have an idea of what time you're working with and the place and of course you know the drama have to sit somewhere so there must be an establishment of that now regarding levels if you notice with this picture right here we have uh, this look like this look like a bookshelf or something like that there's a bookshelf right here there are staircase going up so there are a lot of things for the director and the actors to play with 
Um, right here we have a little table here, but if you notice the table that is center stage right here is not high, which means that whether the actors are seated or standing, we don't have any of the items on stage blocking the audience, right? So blocking the actors, should say, are performers, very important. Um, over here we have a little bench over here, another little table, so you realize that all the items that are closer to downstage you realize that those items are on a low level but the things that are farther upstage are going higher and that is very crucial when you're creating your set because you don't want anything to be blocking any action that is going on on stage or the audience can't get to see any of the performers so you don't want that so that's very important to take into consideration all right so, and when you also look at the set, you should get a certain feel. You know, what time of day is it? I mean, it's in the morning, yeah, but is it a cool morning? Is it a very sad morning? You should get an idea of what is going on, that feel when you look at the set, when the lights pops up on the set, when you hear the music in the background, you should get a sense of the feel. And that is absolutely um, what the actor or the, the director wants to convey to the audience. So that is very important as well. Alrighty. So, so we have, we have moved on from the, the design and now we're going to move on to the use of space, the use of effective use of the performance space. We're following the objectives, you know, the effective use of the performing space. And one thing that is very crucial is the blockings. Now, oftentimes you find that students and even sometimes we as professional actors, we go on the stage and for some reason either we get nervous or, you know, whatever the case might be, we will forget something and we're back end up turn to the audience for an extended time period that is definitely not effective. All right. So right here we have blockings. We have a pattern of movement design by the director or choreographer to help the performers create narratives, relationship, emotions, and mood. So when you watch a play, everything that you see on the play, in the play with the, with the action by the actors, those are considered to be the blockings, and those oftentimes are directed by the director. Right. So you know you may hear somebody say. Why, why am I turning back to the audience? Or why am I turned away there? That no work well. You know, so that is very important that the, everybody is on the same page. The director know the, the body profiles, know the use of the stage position, the actors as well, so that the instructions can be given out clearly and in interpretation of the instructions can be understood and executed. Okay, so the last lesson you looked at on the elements of theater, you looked at the um, the stage position. And since one of my objectives have to do with the spatial awareness, we are just going to reiterate on the importance of that by highlighting um, many of them. So here we have nine little cubicles here, and each of them represent one of the stage positions on the, stage, on the proscenium stage. All right, I am going to give you one of them and let's see if you can identify the others. So the first one I'm going to give you here, the acronym right here is USR and that represents upstage right. Now, a mistake that students often make is that they confuse the stage positions by the perspective they read it from. Now, always remember, you read the stage position from the perspective of the performer. It has to be that way. Because once you start to read the stage position from the perspective of the audience, you're going to get them wrong. So when you're standing on the stage, your left is the left of the stage and your right is the right of the stage. Always remember that when you're standing on the stage, facing the audience. Okay, which means then now here, I would be standing here looking at the audience. So the audience would be looking this direction and this is the stage so the first one we have here is upstage right so if here is upstage right what do you think here would be any any idea all right upstage center and then the following one is upstage left next one we have here is center stage right and of course you should be able to fill out the other blank spaces because that basically give away right so we are we are center here center stage right so now we have center stage and of course if you have right then you must have a left 
And if you have up, then you must have a down. So we have down stage right. If you notice, all of this section over here is considered to be the right of the stage, but they are at different locations. You have up stage right, center stage right, down stage right. Then we have down stage center. If you notice, all of this, center of the stage, and then we have down stage left. Now, having said that, can you tell me this area right here, what this area is all about? It's called the apron. But this line is called the proscenium line or proscenium arch. Ah, there's my apron. Good. So, all of these area on the stage that the audience is able to see, right? You're on stage. But once you step off, you're now off stage. You're either off stage left or off stage right now these locations are the basic playing areas of the stage it's very important that you know them both directors both actors right and once everybody know this you're able to negotiate them accordingly now one thing what people oftentimes do um is mix up the stage position with the body profiles now the profiles of the body is very important when you're working on the stage now because you need to know if you're down stage left which profile is best suited for this moment or this situation while you're on stage all right so they work hand in hand but try not to confuse them at all so we're going to move on to the body profiles or body positions right now there are eight of them eight body profiles we're going to go through them together right now all right so the first one we have here is full front if you notice what we have here representation of the feet on the floor and this is the front of the feet back of the feet right so we're going to work through them now so the i'm standing on the stage facing the audience that position is called full front all right and the opposite to that is the full back and this is the one that you don't want to show the audience unless it is intentional all right and then now we have here to the left i call it semi-profile left and it's also represented as quarter profile left just above that we have profile left if you notice the position of the feet and remember you know imagine you standing on the stage and remember that you read the, um, the stage position from the perspective of the performer is the same thing when you're reading the body profiles all right profile left and then right here now we have three quarter profile left back at full back three quarter profile right profile right and semi profile right or quarter profile right now these profiles are very crucial when you're doing your presentation as well because you don't want to be down stage and then for some reason you're at a three quarter profile right so guess what your back is turned to the audience and you're talking to somebody upstage and you know the audience is so annoyed because they can't see you they're not seeing your facial expression they're not seeing the energy that you're pushing and your back is turned to them now a position like that now is best suited if you are quarter profile right the person is upstage you know talk to them you know yes man where i say talk where you are talking i can't bother the foolishness you know right and you can also turn quarter profile if you talk to them say me because you don't necessarily have to be looking at the person um to be talking to them and just like when you're, you're at home and mommy talking to you you can't but and you turn your back and mommy i talk to you little girl is who me talking to you but not turn to her away but she's still getting the message communication still taking place and this helps to create the dynamics in the performance all right so we can now move on to some theater terminologies and of course you know on your csec exam you're going to get questions about your cultural forms you're going to get questions about the theater per um, terminologies so you definitely have to know your theater jargons um so we have gone through um the roles and responsibilities of the directors um that is clear uh, we have looked at the design the basic floor plan a pictorial view how you use the space um with the body profiles and the stage positions and we're going to look at some theater terminologies all right so here i have a few that you may come across before we have here lines lines written words by the playwright for the actors so once you take up the script 
everything that is there for the actors to say that is being said through the characters are considered to be lines then now we have pete within a scene an incident can occur which has a beginning and an end this has a clear beginning middle and an end and it can be rehearsed by itself and you may see if you watch young and the reckless are power you know you may see a lot of those little moments um we have here act act we have a major division in a play which begins and moves to the climax now if you have seen a live performance before a live play before you recognize that the the, it, the show is divided into two major halves and the two major halves are considered to be the act you have act one act two now the first segment of the show before the intermission that is called act one and the second half is called act two now the act is the major division of the show so just to give you an idea of what exactly we're talking about with the act and the division of the show um stage directions now stage direction the playwright's notes in the script to the director and the actor so you may you know you may take up the script and you realize that there are some little notes to the side or at the top or even during the dialogue where you're in brackets that is telling you to do something walks away closes door those are instructions given to the actor the director by the playwright but of course you know depend when the when the director would have read the script and develop his or her concept or approach in creating it you don't necessarily have to go exactly with the directions in the script but also whatever he or she does is to capture that idea just the same next one we have here is the dialogue dialogue conversation between two or more ooh, characters because remember now when you watching a show watching a play you recognize that you're following a story but you're following the story through the use of dialogue all right so that is very important there now we have the monologue monologue one actor on stage thinking out loud just one man on stage just talking the things to the audience in whatever context the story is being told then we have now the masking and oftentimes we, we mix up marks mix up the masking with the blockings masking to hide or conceal unwanted areas or machinery from audience so anything that you don't want the audience to see like for example a smoke machine you have a little moment where you have you know some smoke or fire so you don't want the audience you don't want the audience to see the smoke machine that's going to spoil the magic so you ensure that you put it at a place where you're going to do what hide it today we have been discussing seasick theater arts right elements of theater arts and we definitely definitely had a good time so i hope that you were paying attention because i know enough time the students may be you know actively engaging the listener and then when they say you little one over there little miss nancy answer this question can't answer pearl answer the question lost in the wilderness so guess what now we're going to just go right back over the things that we went through just to give you an idea if you have missed it earlier all right so we looked at the roles and some of the roles and responsibilities of the director we also look at um, the idea behind the design we also looked at um the textual analysis the approach that the director will have to take having read the script and how he or she going to execute is the vi overall vision well the first the director have to meet with the production team which includes the director the designer the producer and share that vision and then know everything else after that is about executing that vision where the rehearsal will come into play where the the casting will come into play and the stage manager taking notes from the director to ensure that all of these things are being done and i know that is tricky as i mentioned earlier when a group of students with all of you have creative ideas some with none at all and you have to struggle with that negotiating and of course that of course teaches you people skills right so we were looking earlier at the theater jargons before we close off and just to run back through we have lines beat the act stage directions dialogue monologue masking so those are some of the terms that you you may come across on your csec exam all right so i have some questions for you i don't know if you're ready right but you know i'm going to ask you some questions and i'm going to see how well you're going to do if you're paying attention in class today all right so possible questions that you may see on your csec paper um we have the words that are written for the actors and actresses to speak through the characters are called we have a 
lines, B, words, C, speech, and D, dialogue. Now, we mentioned dialogue earlier in terms of the story, you, you being able to follow the story through the characters, right? But remember that the dialogue is the talking with each other, right? But the words that are written on the script for the actor and actresses to see are called lines, right? Bam, bam, bam. Next question over here. So we have dash refers to the notes put into the script by the playwright to tell the director and actors what and how he or she wants them to do something on stage. So we have A here, blockings, B, stage directions, C, stage manager notes, um, stage instructions. And, mm. So what you're going, you know, of course, with, with um, multiple choice, you're going to eliminate the ones that are very far off. You don't want, you know, to country yourself. So you just eliminate those. Oh, that response is too far off so you know try to eliminate so let's see you now stage instructions mm, not gonna sound like it at all um stage managers notes mm, not gonna sound like it at all no blockings kind of sound close-ish because hmm, you know sound like something to do and then you have stage directions no you have to remember you're speaking about the script so the answer for this is stage directions all right moving on to the next one bam 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 Okay, so we looked at the body profiles, so we're testing you on it now to see how much you grasp from it, all right? Which one of the following position is ineffective for a production if the actor is on stage for the entire time? All right, so the answer is B. We can see the B right here, and this one is called full back. So if you're on the stage for an extended period of time, then this would not be the most appropriate stage position to use. All right. Next one here. All right. Dash is a theatre term used for hiding or concealing an actor or object. Hmm. Blocking, blocking, masking, restriction. Hmm. Elimination, elimination. Hmm. Okay, let's just throw away a restriction. I feel like I want to throw away blocking because that not sound so right. Hmm. Blocking and masking sound like it. But you know what? Since blocking have to do with instructions and activities carried out by the actors from the director, let us work with masking because that sound like it is really hiding something. So masking is absolutely the most appropriate response. All right, next one here we have. The performers normally utilize a number of items on stage. We refer to them as, come on, theater art students, you must have this answer. Look at Miss Nancy, answer the question. Answer the question, Cinderella, let me, your hand. Good, let me, no, it, no, it can't be procession of articles. No, 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 come again, man, come again. Stage properties stage properties is the answer because remember props is the shortening for stage properties right and these are items that the actors use easily you know mobile stuff like marker your cell phone a knife a bag you know stuff like that and the items that are fixed on the stage are representing the set all right next question bam 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 okay if Dominic wants to have a secret conversation with Mass George, which area of the stage would you recommend? I mean, this kind of sounds very subjective. Like, why me can't put him anywhere me want to put him on the stage and him have the same conversation? Like, it shouldn't matter. So, this is a question of fear, sir. This is a question of fear, miss. Well, go on right here. So, so look at the options them now. A. Don't stage right. B. Front stage. C. Upstage left the center remember the elimination method so we know that we don't refer to the stage like we're front stage we're not in the audience we don't refer to it like that right and then we say no hmm, upstage left and remember upstage is farther away from the audience right so upstage left kind of too far we don't necessarily hide the conversation per se hmm center stage no center stage is a is a spot 
that you know carries a lot of interest and focus so you don't necessarily want that but what we have here is don't stage right because there are certain principles that you have to engage when you're working in the theater so you go so boom no come here i have something to tell you i needed to hear this come i don't want don't want them to hear me and you bring them to the side and you talk to them because remember you're performing for the audience you know so you don't want to block everything from them so you carry them over to the right so the idea of taking them to the corner is absolutely a magical way to get the job done so don't stay dry is the most suitable um response all right so i want you know guys remember that your journals is important when you engage in the theater process you have to be recording what you have learned what you didn't learn what you understand what you never understand what you like what you didn't like how did it affect you and what can you do to make a situation better to make the play better so those are conversations that you have to engage with your teacher with your peers just to ensure that you're on the right track and then sometimes you don't necessarily have to be right or wrong you're just about engaging the process so you can garner some experience all right so remember you're looking at the production team so that is also important um so we're going to end today's class on the elements of theater with a quote from the right excellence marcus garvey so we have here if you have no confidence in self you are twice defeated in the race of life all right so students all the best on your csec exam big up yourself that's all for today for csec theater arts elements of theater we hope you have grasped most of the points we have discussed you can watch or repeat today listen on jnn today at 4 p.m and in the schools not out highlights on saturday between 1 and 4 p.m right here on tvj it also will be on video on demand on one spot media until next time i am ricardo mcfarlane viewing in safe style and remember to wash those hands keep safe